Rise up, take thy bed. Praise the Lord. That's coming from that verse 8. It says, rise up and take thy bed. Yeah? Rise up, take thy bed, and walk. Hallelujah. This is at the pool of Bethsaida, and this man had been there 38 years. 30, imagine 38 years. 38 years. That's almost a whole lifetime. If a generation is 40 years, that's almost a whole generation. And the man has been sick. Now, he's not saying the man was 38 years old. He had been at the pool for 38 years. 38 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. And Jesus shows up and tells the man, rise up, take thy bed, and walk. Now, in fitness in the word, we are talking about healing. Yes, healing 360. And there are a number of things that we are touching. But I felt led to minister about this, about healing, just to preach about this here in church. Uh, for us also still to, to receive our healing, to get, I believe that this, the preaching also helps us when it comes to receiving our healing. The teaching, of course, establishes us more. And we are going to look at three points, yeah, just from that passage. Rise up is point number one. Take thy bed is point number two. And walk is point number three. Praise the Lord. Number one, rise up. Tell your neighbor, rise up. Rise up. One of the dictionary meanings for rise up is to ascend to the surface, to come from a place of disadvantage, to ascend to the surface. To ascend to the surface is like in water. When you come, you see, when you're swimming, you come out of water to, to breathe, to catch your breath. You get what I mean? You come out of water. You, you ascend to the top. You ascend. You know, I've watched uh, the uh, Marines, Navy SEALs. Man, those guys have deep swimming pools. Deep. Deep. You can collapse before you reach the bottom. But you see, they want you to go to the bottom and pick a gun and come up with it. So no many of them come up and by the time they reach, they, they faint. They, they, they pass out by the time they reach. Yeah, like it's a long time to hold your breath. So they will go down straight. They pick the weapon. Then, they, then you have to come with the weapon and, and lift it like this and look at them and, you know, respond. Yes, so many of them just reach there. So they are just dragged out of the water. But you see, now those people would really understand what it means to rise up, to ascend to the top. Because you really need that oxygen. You really need that air. Now, uh, many whales, whales die of drowning. As they grow old, they die of drowning. They die in the very habitat that they, they, they were created to live. They die of drowning. You know they are mammals. Whales have no gills. You know that? They have no gills. So they, 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 always, they, they get oxygen from up. They have to come out of the water. They just take longer than human beings underwater, but they always come up, you know, then they dive. So the, 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 as they grow old, they become weak to, be, to come up and go down, up and go down. So they just stay at the bottom, they go in the water somewhere and they just drown. Drowning is when water gets in your lungs. Yes. So they, it is sad, isn't it sad? Poor whales. It is so sad that they die that way. So now the whales would understand me very well when I tell them, rise up, ascend to a place of advantage. Ascend to, yeah, ascend to the surface. Come to the surface. Come to a place where there is life, where you can see life, where you can, where you can breathe. Where, come to that place. Any of you that has ever drowned or you were drowning one time? Any? Yes, a few people. Well, some of you are. Some of you have just avoided water totally that it can't even happen to you. You're just, yes. Even showering, you, 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 the excuse you give is water bill, but. <laughs> yeah, yes. You know, I expected more hands than that. Yes, but there's a time I thought I was drowning. It's in the pool, I was landing, I was at the deep end. So, you know, I'm thinking that I have reached the end. And by, I, I didn't know how to swim, how to bring my head up. You know, when you're learning, you, you know how to, with your head down and your, 
So I thought that I had reached. Then I came up. Then I started going down. Then I looked, the people were far. You know, then in my mind I remembered that, okay, I can still do the same thing. I can just still swim underwater until I touch the wall. So I did that. Then when I got to that side and held on that body, like, <sighs> it was good to ascend. It was good to be on the surface. It was good to, to get to a place of advantage. That was a place of advantage. It was a place of advantage. And when man fell, it's like man drowned in the sea of sin, in the sea of darkness. Man drowned is in a place where man is just, he's just there trying to catch life. When we get born again, it's like he brings us to the top to breathe, to see what is around us, to see the opportunities that we have, to see what's at our disposal. Praise the Lord. As he says, rise up. Now this is what he said to the, to the man at the gate beautiful. This man, I'm imagining the disciples with him. Jesus shows up and the man is like, he's like, do you want to be healed? And the man is like, oh, I have no man in the water. Then I'm like, I'm thinking that disciples are like, idiot, 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 idiot. Jesus is before you and you're saying, I don't have man. And then it comes to healing and Jesus is standing before you. How do you say, I don't have a man? You just say, yes, I want to be healed. Do you know who is talking to you? You get what I mean? Have you ever been in such a place? Somebody comes and they're talking to you and you don't know who they are. And they're the person that would have sorted your life. But you don't know who they are. I gave this example of the president of Kenya tells you, I want to travel with you. Somebody say to Thailand or to Singapore, wherever. Where, wherever. where does he love to go? Everywhere. Huh? Yeah? United Kingdom. <laughs> United Kingdom. Say, so President Ruto tells you, I want to go with you to the UK. You know? And you stand there and you know, ah, President, you know, I don't have enough money. You know, I, 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 I don't have yellow fever vaccine. I don't have a passport. I'm like, really? This is the president. You can get your yellow fever card, your passport, and your visa after you arrive. Actually, when you're coming back. <laughs> yeah? You can get them when you're already coming back. Yeah? This is one time, you know, Reinhard Bonke had a crusade in Nigeria sometime in Kano or Kaduna. And the Muslims there really came down to tear down the crusade. It was a big thing. And after that, Reinhard Bonke was banned from Nigeria for nine years. Nine years, he was blacklisted. He can't go to Nigeria. And he used to pray, God, open up that country. Imagine how it ended up being his best, like Nigeria was his best. He really had a heart for Nigeria. Even his last crusade in Africa, he, he went and did it there, his farewell. But you see, now during that time, one time he's preaching in, in, uh, in Benin. Was it in Benin? Yes, he's preaching in Benin. So when he's preaching in Benin, the hotel he's sleeping in, his he, oh, general who, Obasanjo, was sleeping in the same hotel. He was in exile now. He, was, he had not become president the second time, so he's in exile. So he meets him, and he's like, I was blacklisted from Nigeria. And Obasanjo is like, I can introduce you to oh, Sani Abacha, who was the president by the time. Like, I can introduce you to Sani Abacha, and yes, you can get back into Nigeria. And now when Sani Abacha is talking to Sani Abacha, he's like, yes, let's meet Sani Abacha, sends the presidential jet. Reinhard Bok, he speaks from Benin. He goes to Nigeria. No passport checks. No immigration stamp. No visa required. And he meets with Sani Abacha. And Sani Abacha is like willing. Yes, ah, you can come back. That should be changed and all that. And yes, after he left, before they could have the first crusade, Sani Abacha dies. But God, who is God? That's what we say in Swahili. Yeah? Who is God? Mungu Ninani, yes. Who is God? Yes. So, yeah, Obasanjo comes later, you know, runs and he becomes the president. And they had already established a rapport and opens the door to him. And the rest is history. That is where he's won most of the souls, the millions you hear, that's where it was. There. But what am I showing you? He was speaking to the president. 
No immigration officer could stop him. No police could stop him. Nothing. He came. He was even put on a presidential jet. Jesus is before this man. Jesus. If there is anyone who knows about healing, the pro at healing, the, the owner, if there is a cartel for healing, the, the cartel leader, it has to be Jesus. He's standing before the man. The angel is like, an angel is like what? For drug dealers, it's like a mule for the drug dealers. You see those people they send to just take a small bag of, 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 of cocaine, yeah? The angel, if it is healing, the angel is like a mule for Jesus. Jesus is the real deal. He's standing before the man and the man's like, I have no man. <sighs> now that's why Jesus tells him, rise up! Get to a place of advantage. You're so buried in this sea that you cannot even see the opportunities around you. Lift your head above the water. Smell the good air. Smell the good air. Breathe in the good air. It is Jesus. It is Jehovah Rapha standing before you right now. You cannot be reasoning, I don't have a man. He, the one you need is here. Praise the Lord. The one you need is here. He's available. He tells him, rise up. Rise up. And that is what he's telling us today. Rise up. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That the God of this world has blinded them. Then he calls the gospel a glorious gospel. As children of God, why do we live like what we received was not a glorious gospel? You know, we, we, we live like what we received was an option. You get what I mean? Now you're in employment and you, you, you don't seem to stand out like you come to church and like, ah, I work for Safaricom. I work for KCB. I work for Equity. I work for wherever you work. So we just feel like we just work in different organizations, but we are all, employee, we are, we, we are all employees. That's how it feels. No big deal. Like maybe we're even at the same level, just different organizations. And at times that's how it feels for Christians. It's like we are just in another faith. Yeah, they are Muslims, we are Christian. They are, no, he's calling it the glorious gospel. In Ephesians, Paul tells them about the glorious inheritance that we have. It's a glorious inheritance. This is, my, it is, it is not one of the options. This is the only glorious gospel. This is the only glorious life anyone can have. And it, he wants us to rise up. He wants our eyes to be open to what we have received. To what has happened to us. Let your eyes be open to what has happened. Praise the Lord. That is what this man needed to know. He needed to know what has happened to him. Jesus says, you know, we sing and say, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. sing about that and what is going on in their mind is my sins were forgiven. That's all. This glorious inheritance is a very big package. A very big package. Very broad. The word for salvation is the word sozo. Which means forgiveness. It means health. It means vibrance. It means peace. It means security. Sozo. Soteria. It means all that. Life. That is what it means. But if someone will say he touched me and yet we settle for less, we should come out and see the opportunity that we have. Praise the Lord. We should come out and see what he has given to us. So he's rise, come to a place of advantage. Hallelujah. Amen. He says the God of this world has blinded them, but it is so sad that many Christians have also been blinded. Many Christians. The devil, he knows that he lost you when you got born again. That he knows. It was a loss. And he knows he's not going to recover. You know that? But he still doesn't totally feel at loss. Because it's like, it's true we've lost them. They are gone forever. 
But if I can only blind them from knowing what they have. If they can only if they can only settle for less. And you see that is what that is what many corrupt corrupt governments that's what many corrupt governments do. They let you know about some few things. Some few things. You know, as being told we were hearing last week last week but one how there is a I just know it's a clause. I don't know where the clause is. Are clauses only in constitutions? Are they, where are clauses? Contracts? Let's just believe it's a clause, okay? <laughs> Somewhere. In some international documents, okay? That allows Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, a few countries here, to export things on an individual basis. Yeah, to export things with no charge, no tax, no duty to UK and to the USA. That if you make crafts, you make these whatever as wristbands, Kenyan flag, you make what, that you can go and sell. You don't need any middleman. You don't need any broker. You don't need no one to take your money. You get the full amount. Yours is just to pay for shipment and all that. And even there, you're not going to be stopped. How many Kenyans know that? How many people are so good at making those things but are broke? And you look at the opportunity. But why? It is because the ones who know want to benefit alone. So their worry was not that that law or that clause was created. They felt bad when it was created because they wanted to have monopoly on that, that business. But now they, they're like, okay, it was created that we can't reverse. Let's just keep them from knowing. As long as they don't know. Let's keep them from knowing. We can continue to be in charge. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I was saying even many businesses, many businesses have policies that we don't read. And it is like it's intentional for them to make the policies very long and very thin so that we don't read. How many gadgets am I buying in my house? And you think I'm going to read all those policies? I'm going to read for the phone. I'm going to read for the iPad. I'm going to read for the watch. I'm going to read for the heater. I'm going to read for the ah, washing machine. You know, my profession is going to be a reader. You know, and they make them so long, especially the the ones that that really really benefit you. Those are the ones they make tiny. So they will put them in small writings. First of all, they will put in Arabic, then put in French, then <sighs> by the time you get to English, you don't want. <laughs> you don't want, you don't want. And the devil does not, if you get born again, he's lost you. That's a big loss to him. But at that time, he does not stop fighting because he believes that as long as he can get you blinded like he's blinded this world, as long as he can get you to a place where you don't know what is at your disposal. You don't know the truth. He says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It is the truth that you know that makes you free. It is not the truth that is written that makes you free. It's the truth that you know. So as long as he can blind you from the truth. And that is why when he called Paul in Acts chapter 26, he says that he has called him to go to the Gentiles, to open their eyes, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light. It was just to open their eyes. Whatever they needed was always there. The forgiveness of sins was always there. The inheritance among them which was sanctified by faith, it was there. But the Gentiles didn't see it because they had been blinded. Sadly, many children of God, when it comes to the topic of healing, they are blinded. They are, actually, it's Christians who defend sickness. Can you imagine? It's Christians. World Health Organization. Who? With all their hypocrisy, they act like they are fighting for health. Isn't it? Governments, they've put an HIF. Everyone is fighting for health. All these fitness clubs and gyms and water, they, they are promising better health. All the people selling organic food, they are promising health. Everyone. But when it comes to church, it's like we lose our mind. 
So it's like every human being is more benevolent than God. Everyone thinks health is important apart from in the church. We are done say, what if God gave it to me? What if God gave it to me to teach some people a lesson? What if God, what if God gave it to me to be an example? What if God gave it to me to be a testimony? Really? The world doesn't reason that way. Your boss at work doesn't reason that way. But we think that that is how God reasons. That is so sad. It is so sad. We are blinded. Now that is why he says, rise up. Come to a place of advantage. Come to a place. See what is at your disposal. See the advantage that you have. Open your eyes. Come out of that water. Murky water. Come out of it. Yes. Water. Selling you swimming in the coast. Those boys from the coast don't close their eyes in the ocean. They open their eyes while they swim. And you see when I was talking to them, they, they wanted to make me feel like I'm the one who is weird. That I don't open my eyes. I tell them you're the weird one. So, like, so you, you don't open your eyes. You, you don't want to open your eyes. I'm like I don't want. Yes. We don't put salt in ice, even when we are here. Do you ever get your eye and put salt? The ocean is worse. I've ever tasted that water. It's worse than home salt. But you see, they want to make me feel like I'm the weird one. No, I told them, all of you are the weird ones. Why do you open your eyes in the water? Why do you open your eyes? He said to see. I don't want to see. Why, what should I see? There is salt. You want me to see salt? I don't want to see salt. I don't want Hey, there you see an octopus. It will touch your eye. You better close that eye. Octopus will hold your eye. <laughs> yeah? Now they open. But you see now when you're in that water, you can't wait to come out and open your eyes and see better. You're blinded there in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, but you see when you get out of that water, you want to, you want to see, you want to breathe, you want to. He says, rise up. He tells this man, rise up. Jesus is right before you. But you still want to get in that ocean water. You still want to get in that water stirred by the angel. You still want somebody to take you there. You want somebody who can even fail. You want somebody to hold you. Somebody who can fail. Jesus is right before you. Take your head above the water. Look at who is standing before you. You're never going to need that water. You're never going to. This is better. What you have is better. Rise up. Rise up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, rise up. Hallelujah. Now in English, now this one you can go Google, I'm not going to teach you. I've had many people use raise and rise interchangeably. They are different words, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've had, I've had even people preaching. Yes, he requires us to rise up to the light of the glorious gospel. Yeah. In Isaiah 53, verse 1 to 5, this is what he wants us to rise up to. So one, two, three, let's go. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form of cam no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. This is what the devil wants to blind you from. This is what the devil wants to blind you from. And that is why you see... Many Christians think that what God offers is too good for them. Yeah, Many Christians think that's above me. That's above me. It, it, it's too good to take. It's too good. They think, yes, I, I would have been healed, but I know I've not been very prayerful. I, I know I would have been healed, but I'm not a tither. I, I would have been healed, but I'm the one who ate poorly. You know, yes, many people disqualify themselves that way. But you see, Isaiah said, who has believed our report? Then he says, this man was... He was he, he was he he took our griefs and sorrows, which I've explained. The Hebrew words are makov and koli, which Matthew quotes very well. He says sicknesses and pain. You, you get what I mean? When they translate from English to he, from Hebrew to English, 
they didn't they didn't render it well when they said griefs and sorrows but he says he healed them all to fulfill what was prophesied by the El, 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 Elijah I mean Isaiah that he himself took our sicknesses and our pains that is what it means praise the lord then now in verse in verse 4 he starts by saying surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted then verse 5 but now you can underline but that's an interjection you get what i mean because see, when we are seeing him all despised, neglected, a man of sorrows, we're like, wow, what a sinful man he must have been. Because see, in this time, they really understood. They, like, they knew that when some calamities befall it, it's because you're, you're, you're really not in right standing with God. Like some things only happen to people as a curse. You get what I mean? So they are looking, this man is rejected, this man is despised, this man is like all this suffering that he's going through. Then Isaiah puts an interjection. But he was wounded for our transgression. It was our transgression. It was not his. Before you judge him, it was mine that he took. Yeah. Before you think that he was the sinner, no, it was for my transgression. It was for my iniquities. It was for my peace. And the stripes were for my healing. Hallelujah. Who has believed our report? You know, once you understand this report, once you believe this report, you'll, drop, you'll stop saying, I've not prayed enough. you stop saying, I've not given enough. I've not been in church enough. You stop saying that because you realize that he did it for me. And that's what the devil wanted to blind you from. It was for ours. The stripes he received, they were for us. They were for me. It was ours. But he was bruised for our iniquities. The man was not a sinner. The man had no fault. He didn't need healing, but it was for us. It was for us. Praise the Lord. Now that's why he's saying, rise up. See that. See that opportunity. A man who didn't need healing. A man who didn't need forgiveness. A man who didn't need all this. He went and took on your pain. He went and took on your sorrows. He went and took on your iniquities. Why? So that you should enjoy all the blessing that is there. And now imagine how it is an insult to him or how it is painful to him when you come and say, I think, I think in God's timing he will heal me. I, I, I think God has given to me for some. I'm sure Jesus in heaven, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to dramatize. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Theology policemen, don't arrest me. But you know, he, imagine Jesus is hearing you saying, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a, like, eh, now you see, I don't think I'm holy enough. I don't think I have that gift. I, I don't think for me I deserve to be, to be healed. I think I'm just meant to, I'm meant to live with it. It's not that bad. Yeah, many Christians say, it's not that bad. I can live with it. I, I imagine Jesus in heaven try, tearing his shirt off and showing you his back. See this. Look at my back. Look at those scars. Look at those scars. What are you talking about? Did I waste time going on that cross? Look at those scars. Do you know what I went through? How do you excuse it? You get what I mean? Yes. That for me, I, I'm okay just going to heaven. I'm okay just receiving healing. Imagine your mom goes to the village, sells her cow, sells her land, yeah? Rents out her house that she has and she goes and stays in a small shack to pay for you school fees, transport to school affair, and hostel. And your mom comes to Nairobi and finds you. You walk to school. You get what I mean? You, how does she receive that? She sold that cow. She could have stopped at the house because you would have school fees. But she sold the cow so that you can be on the bus. She paid the bus for you. Jesus would have stopped at just dying. He received the stripes for our healing. And we can't miss it. He emphasizes it in the Old Testament. He emphasizes it in the New Testament. By his stripes we were healed. It sounds like an insult for us to tolerate it. Praise the Lord. He says, rise up, open your eyes, see what I have for you. This all belongs to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, rise up. Get to a place of advantage. The number two, take thy bed. Take thy bed. Here I use the bed as his possession. His possession. Yeah. God wants you to have a grasp on what belongs to you. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's faith now. Now that you have seen, now that you have come, your head has come out of the water. You've seen the place of advantage. Are you going to step into it? Are you going to receive it? Are you going, are you going to accept that this is mine? Yes, katalambano. Yeah, that's a Greek word for seizing. Taking, you know, take, grab, take a hold of it. So we've seen. Are you going to take it? Yeah. Once your eyes are open and you've come to the top, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't know things and then you don't let them work in your life. That is sad. And for many children of God, it is that way. And that is religion. That's how we go back to religion. You get born again and you're so excited about healing. You see, you're excited about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You're excited about speaking in tongues. You're excited about everything. And after some time, you lose sight of it. You lose sight of it. John chapter 14, verse 1. This is a very good command, a very good instruction to us. A very, this is not a suggestion. You know, sometimes we read, we read the words of Jesus and we just feel, wow, this guy must have been a poet. He was, you know, that, that's what we feel like he was just saying some nice things. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was not rhyming. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. In other words, whenever your heart is troubled, you're the one who let it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now he is instructing us. He's not giving us a suggestion about what we can do. He's telling us, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart. You know what excites me about such scriptures? Whenever I read such a scripture, what excites me is that it is possible. Otherwise, he would not have required it from me. So whenever I read a scripture like this, I'm like, wow, man, he believes in me more than I believe in myself. Like, as in, he really, really believes in me. There are scriptures I read and, and I'm like, God, you really believe in me. You really believe in me. Like, I, I don't see my potential like you do. Like, you know, because you know, you may think, eh, hey, it's impossible to, for your heart not to be troubled. Hey, that is impossible. Now he's saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now, that's the remedy. Believe in Jesus also. You believe in God. Believe in Jesus also. Many people believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus. Even many Christians. Now, believing in Jesus means understanding the entirety of what the person of Jesus or the third person of the Trinity represents, functions for. That is believing in Jesus. You understand, why did he come? Why did he die? Why was he buried? Why did he rise again? Why did he take on human nature, a human figure, body, and retained it till today? Why? You see, Jesus is in heaven with a body. He has scars. He identifies with us forever. Why? Now, that believing in him means to understand what the Jews, these people believed in God. And they believed in the true God. They believed in Yahweh. Real, for real. But they didn't believe in Jesus. And that is why he always emphasizes, believe in me also. Believe in me also. Because our only advantage is in what Jesus did on the cross. Our only advantage is that he became a substitute for us. He took our place. And whatever the devil had against us, he said, devil, put it on me. I'm here. Put it on me. Not anymore on them. Put it on me. Put it on me. Put it on me. Praise the Lord. Now that's what he's telling him. Believe. As long as you don't believe that, your heart will always be troubled. That is the remedy. Isaiah 26, 3. He keeps him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on the Lord? For he trusts. You trust Jesus? Yes. If it is believing in God, even demons believe and they shudder. They tremble. Demons. Demons. So it is not enough to believe in God. It is not. And that is why you see that today when they are trying to uh, try all this inclusion. It is Jesus that is always ruled out. God can be left for so long. 
in prayers. I remember prayer in Uganda for schools. We used to pray the Lord's Prayer for a long time. We just used to pray, Our Father, what in heaven, the Lord be thy name, all that. Then they brought a prayer. What was that prayer? I don't even remember. But the prayer had nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing. It just had God. Oh God. Something like that, you know. And many of those people, you find that even musicians, I know labels are signing gospel, hip-hop artists, and what. You can sing about God as long as you don't put Jesus. Jesus is the big thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, may it, let it be a Christian song, but let it not have Jesus. There is no Christian without 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 Christ. Praise the Lord. That is why there is no salvation without him. Yes. You can know all about God the Father. You can talk about God the Father. But it is through the Son that we come to the Father. It is through the Son that our sins were atoned for. It is through the Son. It is through the Son. So he's telling them, yes, you believe in God. You do well to believe in God. But believe in me also. Believe in me. Otherwise, your hearts will stay troubled. You will always be troubled as long as you don't believe in me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That is how we take a hold of it. That's how you take thy bed. You've seen. You've seen the good life. Believe in Jesus. He's the one who was wounded for our transgressions. He's the one that was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him for our peace. And, and uh, by his stripes we are healed. Believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 15, 22 to 29. That lady is a real hero. We should make a movie about that lady. Yeah. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. <laughs> and for you, Pastor, has not responded to your message for just eight months. By the way, you, you've even left church. It's not yet a year. I'm going to reply. Who said I'm not going to? It's not yet a year. Yes, just a little time. Give me some time. Just a year. But you see, Jesus did, in other words, in Swahili, you say, Alimlenga. Yes. He intentionally ignored the lady. The savior, the one who came to love. Now as a pastor, when I read these scriptures, I try to leave them. <laughs> um, yes, I'm following my master. <laughs> yeah. Jesus ignored the lady. Hey, chai. Jesus ignored the lady. <laughs> A lady whose daughter was in trouble. She was not a lady just disturbing. Dozing in service. She, she wanted a solution. And his disciples, now you see when she realized that he's ignoring her, she went to the disciples. And of course the disciples, they could not take it. Especially Peter. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. <laughs> That's the only solution they had. <laughs> Their solution was always, you remember even when they came to him and told him that people are hungry? They told Jesus to send them away. <laughs> their, their solution was always to send them. <laughs> send people away. Yeah. You know why? Because they were immature. Yeah, even the children, yes, they were sending the children away. And that's what immature parents also do. Parents fear, yeah, they fear tantrums. Why? Because the parents themselves are self-centered. They fear to cause a sin. Yeah, so if a child is doing something, they say, you, you get, go buy for her chocolate. Instead of dealing with the issue. He say, yeah, go buy for her bread. Go, and auntie's going to buy for you bread. Aye, but it's because that's how the parents were raised. So these disciples were raised that way. They were raised to throw tantrums. So send them away. It's a sin. Look at how people are looking at us. Yes. Send them away. Yes. And verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, 
help me. Now you realize what you said? Let not your heart be troubled. This lady didn't let her heart be troubled. Jesus, the one who is meant to love you, is ignoring you. Yes, or us pastor doesn't say hi to us and our heart is troubled for the next 20 years. It's the story we give everywhere. That, that pastor, that pastor, that pastor. You know, this lady was not distracted. You see, offense is normal, a distraction. Yes, you come and sit in church. All you came for is to hear the word of God. But now you're offended that pastor has no belt. Instead of just thinking, why don't we do a fundraiser and get a belt for pastor? Why don't we talk to the finance team and we see if his salary we can add allowance for belt? You, you, you know, you just get offended and you miss the word. <laughs> yeah, Vitu Ndogo Dogo, yes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> This lady was not distracted. She was not offended. Jesus is ignoring her and it's evident to everyone. The disciples are already offended on her behalf. <laughs> but a lady came and worshipped him. Yeah? She came and worshipped him. And he answered and said, It is not meat. In other words, it's not right. To take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Ha! Now, if you had held your yes, your cool, you 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 you've held yourself together. That's the moment we erupt. Yes, oh, you've been ignoring me. I've said nothing. Now you're calling me a dog. You a man of God calling me a dog. Yeah, you lie to people that you came to love. And now you're calling me a dog. The lady said, no, that's not distracting me. She said, truth. Hey, you're right. I'm a dog. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Now this lady had come to a place. She, it's like she had already been told, arise. She had seen what was at her disposal. She had seen what Jesus carried. And she knew that even if it's crumbs, I can be healed. Like, I don't even need, I don't need everything. Let him not lay hands. Let him, just the crumbs. Yes, if I'm a dog, just the crumbs will make me whole. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The next verse. The next verse. And Jesus departed this, uh, came to God. Okay, this is not the account, but there's an account that talks about how Jesus was really marveled at her. Her faith. Imagine. This lady saw it and she took a hold of it. She took a grasp of it. She did let it go. Many Christians see it, but they let it go. We know it, but we let it go. What do we say? Ah, pastor, I believed. Can you imagine, Pastor, for two weeks I prayed about it. Two weeks. Hmm? You have more than 30 years of your life, but two weeks were okay for you to settle with a situation for the rest of your life. This lady was, it's like every obstacle was thrown in her way to give up and she not give up. We should come to a place where when we arise, like he has told us, what we see, nothing should deter us from getting what we see. Nothing. You know, it's just like if somebody is drowning and you throw them a lifeline, let it be a life jacket, a piece of wood, whatever you throw them, they will hold on to that. They will hold on to that for dear life. What we have been given in Isaiah 53, when he tells us to arise, what he's showing us is our lifeline. He's showing us a lifeline. He's showing us that our healing is guaranteed. Sometimes we give up too early. The moment, he, the moment we are ignored, like the lady was ignored, we give up. The moment the disciples bring us to him, we give up. The moment he says that he's not called to us, he's called to the children of Israel, we give up. Or when he says we are dogs, we get offended and give up. Praise the Lord. And people say, oh, pastor, I read this whole book on healing and nothing happened. And they gave up. No. You pursue. Praise the Lord. I was telling the people in the morning service that the, the worst thing about this generation, our generation today, 
And one thing that you hear from every failure is that I tried. At least I tried. We are satisfied with trying. We say, at least I tried. At least I applied. I took my three CVs. I took your three CVs and that's it. You know, as long as you are alive, you have all the opportunities. As long as you are alive, the best life is ahead of you. As long as you have breath. As long as you have breath, there is no reason to give up. There is no reason. You keep that hope alive. You keep that. This man who was at the pool, that pool, this man had been there 38 years. You know that in 38 years you lose hope? And you know, faith only works where there is hope. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. As long as there is no hope. If, if you've given up hoping, then your faith is never going to avail. Because what is it going to avail? Hope is like the picture. Faith paints it. Hope is like the picture. You have to see it. Praise the Lord. Now it tells us, arise. What does that do? It stars hope in you. But now you have to grasp it. You have to take a hold of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If these people, the woman we are seeing here, the man, at that man at the pool of Bethsaida, if these people had only seen the opportunities that they had, but left them, like many, many people who are suffering with sickness have been in services where healing has been preached. Many Christians will tell you, God heals. They will tell you about the great healing crusades, but they have left them. Imagine if this man had seen Jesus and had been informed and he knows Jesus can do great things. And he left. He would be telling, oh, Jesus is a mighty healer. But it would be that. Now many of us have, many of us have decided to live a broken life. Downtrodden. Poor. And we've just chosen. And imagine he's telling us, let not your heart be troubled. You have, the devil likes victims. You know that? I had a story of somewhere in Texas when they would be hunting. They would get, they record a rabbit, a wounded rabbit, or hare that is wounded. Then they get, they record it and they put it in a main box and they would put it in the bush. And they play that sound repeatedly. They loop it. And foxes or other animals, predators, they come quickly because they love the sound of wounded animals. Predator animals. If lions can tell how a buffalo sounds when it is wounded, that is the one they will run to. Because a victim prey is easy prey. You know that? Yes. If they come and they look at a herd of wildebeests and they see one that is limping, that's the one they are going to go for. Sadly, many children of God are victims. Now the devil who is moving around like a roaring lion, seeking for whom to devour, they become easy target. And many times our victim mentality comes out even in our prayers. God, why me? God, I, I don't deserve that. Oh God, oh God, why me? Remember me. I have prayed. I've done everything I've done. And the devil is like, that's it. And that is why you see that people who are always victims, always whining, it never stops. Like their life never stops going down. Their life never stops being bad. The way that life stops being bad is when they first change their mentality. When they stop being victims, their surroundings start changing. But as long as they are victims, I think things are too bad for me. Things are too... I was giving a testimony in the morning about Talmon and Koi. They were sharing their testimony. And men, testimonies are just starting. Man, these guys have never been victims. Some of us, when we had their testimony, that's the first time you're hearing. That's the first time you're getting to know about what they've been through. It's the first time. Because they are cheerful. They come and they lead service. They come. Yes, not for you fail to pay rent once. And now the president is taxing all of us for you. But you know, <laughs> not the president, Kerry. You, you, you know. Now for them, they didn't just fail to pay rent. They had to leave their house. Newly married couple. They, they had to go through all that. No victim mentality. And you see how they've changed their life. No victim mentality. That devil likes it. That's why he says, let your heart not be troubled. Let your heart not be troubled. Let your heart not. So today, I'm telling you, if you rebuke anyone you talk, it will be turned against you. Nowadays, no one can be corrected. Nowadays, everyone wants to be a victim. You see, recently so, 
the Hamas attacked Israel. You remember? Man, one night they just bombarded the guys with measles. They took people, you saw those videos, they took people from the streets, civilians, innocent people, they are shooting them. Israel retaliated. Now, of course, there are many innocent people that are dying. War is bad, generally. But you know, now people are pleading for mercy. For the Hamas, they are now the victims. Like, you know, at least if it was for the other Palestinians, the civilians, who are being collateral damage, now that's... But the Hamas, these are terrorists. These are guys who walk up to just kill people. They targeted civilians. The videos are evident. They are pulling a university girl and they are shouting, Allah Akbar. Allah. She's not a militia, a militia. She's not a... Like... Now when they hit them back, they are like, let's plead for... Everyone has to be a victim. They said they will just put a video and make the worst thief and what that you know that man his life was affected when his dad became gay when what when man all of us our parents have got you know if we all want a story to do wrong we have a story yes I can go still there is a time my parents didn't have school fees I can we can all become whatever we want there will always be an excuse the victim mentality. And you as a child of God, the devil wants to hear that. The devil wants to hear that you're defeated. Because that's when he comes. And you, you've seen that. Like many times when Christians start going down that drain, that's when now things start coming in that torture them, harass them. and what. I've seen, You know, being a pastor for all these years, there's a lot that I have seen that, would, that, that of course helps me to make some of the conclusions that I make. But I have seen a number of people, even in this ministry, who... If I told you, you would not even believe what they have gone through. What they, you know, now just look like, is it this month or this, this Lucy? This month? Yes. And last month. Lucy has lost over three, four people. Close people. Dying. She's there in the barrios. She's spending money. She's, she's a main person. For. Lucy stands here and serves like she has no problem. She came and served during Virtuous Woman. She left, they, they were just, they were doing the burial work. She left there and she, she came here. Another time it was like that. Her dad is hospitalized, bedridden. She's the one paying all these bills. She really supports her family. She's doing all these things. And she comes and she stands here. And you just see her serving. And there are many people like that here. There are many people. I told you about Pastor Mary Kelly. I went to East Pocot, found Pastor Mary Kelly. They had not had water for how long? And Pastor Mary Kelly knows that she can call us for any help, anything we, she needs. Imagine. You know, now, here you get in trouble when there is no water. And you mean there is no water because you don't have water in your toilet and your shower. That's what you think. But you have drinking water, 20 liters you've stocked. You, you know, you can go to a neighbor. Now, you know, in East Pocot, when you say there is no water, it means there is no water. Yeah, there is no drinking water. There is no neighbor you're going to go to and say, help me with that, Jerica. There is no water. Months. And she's there serving the Lord. So sometimes the victim mentality is actually pride, but people don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We think that we are the ones who have suffered most in the world. We think that our suffering is unique to us. Let me tell you, none of you has gone through any suffering that is unique to you. I'm not underplaying what, what you're suffering or what you may be going through. But let me tell you, you're the one who has chosen to be sad. You're the one who has chosen your life to be that way. You're the one who has chosen. Yes. You're the one who has chosen. Don't be a victim. When you see what God has put at your disposal, when you see the word, how do you pray not as a victim? You come up and you say, blessed be the name of the Lord. You say, yes, the Lord. He daily loads me with benefits. He always causes me to triumph. You know, you, that's how you pray. Otherwise, the devil is going to hear that victim mentality. And he will come. And you realize that everyone who has a sad story, it's you they come to. And then, you see, after you discuss, you're all happy because you, 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 you've competed at how, who is suffering most. Have you ever seen people like that? Hey, this is sick. Things are hard. I'm saying, even me, hey, let me tell you. Yes, even me, I was just kicked out of the house, but yeah, things are gay. Uh, yeah, yes, watch her too. And say, yeah, you and me, I'm, even last night I don't have food. Even, now you see, you're all victims. None is, no one is going to help the other. 
all you're going to live with, you're going to be satisfied that your story was worse than the other one. You're just competing who has the worst story. Who is most to be pitied? Eh? You're, looking, you're competing to be pitied. People say, this pastor is not so loving. This pastor is not... Let me tell you the truth. God called me to raise soldiers. Praise the Lord, yes. Yeah. So sometimes when people are very wimpy, they come to our church, at times they will leave. And it's okay. Praise the Lord. There are, yeah, there are people who will pamper you and one time they will get you ready to, <laughs> to come to be challenged. <laughs> to, be, to be challenged. But that's not me. Praise the Lord. Yes. I want you to rise. Rise up. Yes. Yeah, take your place. Take your place. Don't be bogged down by what the devil is doing. Because you're giving the devil credit. Look at Job. Job lost his family. Job lost donkeys. Job lost camels. He lost everything. And the Bible says when he showed up, what did he say? Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was the first that came from his mouth. And he asked anyone to just, why me, Lord? 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 It would be Job. Jesus is telling the disciples because he knew, he told the disciples, you're going to face tribulation. He says, they are going to throw you in prison. They are going to kill you. Jesus is telling them. Literally, Jesus is explaining to them, actually, you're the victims. Yeah, here you're the victims. But I don't want you to, I, I, I don't want that to be the thread you hold on to. Yeah, but you're the victims. They are going to choose to murder you. They are going to behead you. They are going to throw you in prison. But be of good cheer if I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. And he tells us in Hebrews that none of us has suffered like he suffered. To the shedding of blood and fighting against sin. But none of us. We can always come up with our head high. Many people, I've seen many people, as I've ministered healing, I've seen many people receive healing when they stop playing the victim. Gladys is one of the testimonies of the people that were still a victim. Yeah, but most people you will see, People come up, they try to walk when they, they try to, you know, they've, they've come for the meeting. I have come to be healed. You remember the lady that was healed in Homer Bay? Was it the second day? The lady whose son brought and she was even meant to go to hospital. With all that medical documents that she came with, her feet swollen, and she says she came. And she's like, she was standing that whole time because she told us she could not stand even for 30 minutes. And she says she was standing, she was running around. You could see that that lady had chosen to get out of that situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you rise, when you see what God has called you for, when you see what he has prepared for you, you stop, you see, a victim, this is what it says, when you are a victim, this is what it says about your life. There is no hope. I'm here forever. I'm here forever. That's how you feel, I'm here forever. One time we were put in a prison cell. There, You see, I didn't become a victim when I was in the prison cell at Central Police. I preached to the guys who are there. Yes, I was a victim. I was put in. Uh, it was unfairly. No statement was made. Police officers were bribed. It was just corruption. It was all that. But I was put in. And I was in the whole night. I led, I led people to Christ. I knew that that was not my end. I'm not a victim. And that was not my end. That was just, and I got out the next day. And the next day it was fitness in the word. I got out in the morning, went home, showered, came and preaching fitness in the word. As if nothing had happened. Yes. Yes. And it is not my story. I don't say, oh, I've suffered for the gospel. I was put in central police. I've suffered for the... No, I've not suffered yet. Nothing. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes, so a victim means this is where I want to be. And if you see many victims start enjoying where they are. Yeah. When you bring solutions that would get them out of that place, they don't want. They are so used, yes. Victims will get jobs and keep losing them. Because they are so used to a place of where people give them handouts. They now enjoy, you see, it's like a drug. You enjoy sympathy from people. It's like a drug. Yeah. Your oh, dopamine, it, 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 it goes high when, when people are like, oh, sorry, you didn't have supper. Oh, sorry, you didn't have, now you, you just feel high. You, 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 you post on Facebook, you say, even this shall end. You know, you, you, just, you, you just make nice posts. <laughs> yeah, this too shall pass. And every year it is passing. Every year you have something that shall pass. Yeah? Don't be a victim. If you're going to do great things for God, take yourself out of the category of victims. 
start proclaiming boldly. Look at, speak like Jesus spoke. Even before Pilate, Jesus said, no one can take my life. It has been given to me. I lay it down on my own account and I pick it up. Imagine during a time where he's meant to be pleading for mercy. During a time where he's meant to be like a victim. He was not a victim. Hallelujah. Choose not to be a victim. Speak. You know, when you look at the statements of faith in the Bible, these statements don't make room for victim. Yes. They don't. Jesus is going to die. He's telling people, you're going to be beheaded. You're going to be, but be of good cheer. Gosh. Like, why not tell us what will happen after we are beheaded? You know, he will tell them, yeah, they may behead you or not, but let me tell you, there's a crown for you. You guys will come to heaven. I'll have mansions for you. And what you live in this world, so be of good cheer. No, Jesus doesn't use that. Yes, you'll be beheaded. You'll be arrested. They'll throw you in jails. They will do this and this. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And that is why Paul says, our light affliction is but for a moment. And the devil, now the devil feels bad. You know the devil was crying when Paul was saying that. You knew. I thought that I was the only one who knew. Yes, he was crying because like with all we have done, he's still writing about it as light. Because <laughs> the devil had decided his entire arsenal to get Paul down and Paul is still saying, our light affliction. Our light. Like he's not even felt it. He's calling it light. Whatever happens to you, tell him this light affliction is but for a moment. This light affliction is but for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, take it, take thy bed, take thy bed, hallelujah. That woman was not a victim. And taking means you believe. After you have seen, you rise up, you see above the water, you take a hold of, you take a hold of what he says. And what do we take? What do we believe? You believe the word. You believe Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. Yeah. My soul do not forget the benefits of the Lord. Who? Yeah, blessed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. So you wake up in the morning and you feel like that sickness is. And like, oh God, I have prayed, I have. Stop, stop, stop a moment. My soul, do not forget. The Lord who heals all my diseases. He forgives all my iniquities and heals all my... Yes. Because see, what is your soul? Your emotions, your thoughts, your mind. And if you don't put it in its right place, it will always lead you astray. So when your soul is telling you, well, it's back again. It's happening again. Now you are the one to change that. You're like, no, 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 my soul. Don't act ungrateful. You know, you, you would be lost. You would be going to hell. Don't forget the Lord who forgives all your iniquities. And he heals all your disease. Yeah. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 53, 4, 5. By his stripes you were healed. First Peter 2, 24. By his stripes we were healed. It's even in past tense. You know. You're just like, body, I don't care how you feel right now. I know it was already done. It was done. It is a done deal. It is a done deal. Speak some words that mean that you believe it. You believe it. Take a hold of it. Take a hold of it. Praise the Lord. Take, don't leave it. Don't leave it. The problem with many Christians is that we are not speaking enough. That takes me to point, uh, point three, which is end walk. Point three is end walk. Now that you believe, take action. Almost everyone that Jesus healed, he called them to action, isn't it? Yes. yes, this man we are seeing, he told him, take thy bed and walk. And walk. Jesus didn't say you're healed and left him there. Yeah? Take that. You know, we see Peter. Peter went to the man at the gate beautiful. When Peter told the man, rise up. And the man did not. What did Peter do? He took him by the hand, the right hand, and pulled him up. Rise up! <laughs> this one was healed yeah. so <laughs> he took him and said rise up and walk rise up and walk there was always a call to action you know rise up so you see the opportunities you see what the word of God has provided take thy bed you own them 
You don't say they are, they are not too good for you. Praise the Lord. They belong to you. He said if he did not hold back his only son, won't he with him freely give us all things. All things. All things. That does not mean that you receive Jesus, then you go looking for other things. The things come in Jesus. They come in Jesus. The example I gave you this morning is an example of an air ticket. You get an air ticket. Disclaimer, apart from Jumbo Jet. You get an air ticket. <laughs> you don't again go to the airlines. You don't go to KQ and say, I also want to pay for food. They say, but I already have a ticket. I want to pay for food also. No. With that ticket, food comes. Praise the Lord. Over what? Is it 40 what kilograms? Baggage, you carry how much? Yeah? Like all that comes with that ticket. It all belongs to you. With Jesus, all things came. We don't receive Jesus and get born again. Now then we start pursuing healing. No, when we received him, we received all things. Now your eyes have been opened. You're no longer blinded. If your eyes have been opened, now take a hold of that. Praise the Lord. Now to walk means take action. Hallelujah. Take action. He tells us, we normally read in, in, in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9. And many people like this scripture, 1 Corinthians 2.9. They like it for the negative aspect. You see how people like to be victims. Yeah? But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Then because we, we are playing victims, we normally stop there. We are playing victims, we normally just stop there. We say, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither the hearts of men perceive. We stop there. And we are so excited not to have known. We are so excited not to hear. Yes. We put it on a jumper. Yes. I'm telling you, I may not know. I may not have heard. But what the Lord is about to do, I may not victim. Let's read on. But God has revealed them unto us. Those are the things we've read in Isaiah. Praise the Lord. In case a sickness came to me, I don't, I'm not among the eye that has not seen. I'm not among the ears that I've not heard. I'm not among the hearts that I've not perceived. I know because God has revealed it to me that by his stripes I was healed. That he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. It has been revealed to me. It's been revealed to me by his spirit. It is no longer hidden. Praise the Lord. It is no longer hidden. I take a hold of it. I take a hold of it. It has been revealed. When he says rise up, he brings you to a place where he opens your eyes. I know what is mine. I know what belongs to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. And that when we are walking, the first action we take is to confess and to speak. Like I told us, today few people, and you know, many Christians, they, many Christians are criticized for claiming and confessing. They are criticized. Just a bunch of claim, claim it, take it people. You know, we are criticized that way. But you see, that is Bible. You can't take that away from faith. When you read Mark chapter 11, verse 23, he tells us to say more than he tells us to believe. Yes, so many are believing, but they are not saying enough. Many testimonies, I was even sharing a bit in the morning, but many things, if you've been here for a while, you've seen some of the things we've been through as a ministry, many of the testimonies, and you, you had these things said before they ever happened. They were said for long. We said, God is going to do this. God is going to do this. We are walking into this. We are, and they happen. Praise the Lord. We say no one is going to die of COVID. We're on the first lockdown. And we kept saying that. We kept saying it. And it happened. To confess means to say the same thing with God. Not the same thing with how your body feels. Not the same thing with what the news said. Not the same thing with what the doctor said. Imagine the doctor tells you, Go home, you're okay. And you don't feel okay. And he tells you, yeah, in a week it will be gone. And you believe him. You tell people, yes, even when people are helping you, ah, you say, yes, I was discharged. The doctor said, I'm okay, I was discharged. You believe him. But when God tells you you are okay because of a small feeling you have, you say, no, I'm not yet okay. I'll be a liar if I say I'm okay. I, I, I don't want to. Yeah, faith does not mean denying. Yes, faith, faith, faith does not deny that it's there, but faith denies it power over you. By the mere fact that you can't confess what God has said, it means that faith has denied you power. I mean, that, 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 you, that you don't have faith to deny it power. It's influencing that you believe a document more than you believe this document written over 2,000 years ago, that document of God that has never failed. 
that has been time tested and proven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So say it, talk it at your workplace. Let people know you talk it. When everyone says, oh, this is a season of flu, let them know, hey, you don't say that around her. You don't say that around him. Yeah, let them know. Oh, we are doing poorly. This economy is going to be bad. Mm -mm. No, Haita to Maliza. No, for us, we are thriving. We are, actually, I'm looking at places for holiday. Where, 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 where do you recommend? Money is not a factor. Where, where would you recommend for a holiday? Yeah. Let them sit you down and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm HR. I know how much you earn. How would you plan all these things and that the people who earn more than you can't plan for them? Then, hey, we come from two different economies. Yeah, you, you, you wait for the budget to be read here. For me, I just waited for that man to hang on the cross and raise again. That's all I waited for. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's it. Talk, 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 talk. We talk about a lot other than that. Yeah. We forget that. But right from the Old Testament, we see people talking. You see David and Goliath. You remember David and Goliath? Yes. David said, the Lord will deliver you to my hand this day. Yes. I'll cut off your head and feed your carcass to the birds. Yes. David said that before he slew Goliath. Yes, yes small David. He spoke. Yes. Caleb and Joshua, they spoke. Jonathan spoke and Jonathan said that the Lord does not only deliver with many. When he was going to fight, he spoke. You remember the lady, uh, the, the lady with the issue of blood. She said, if I may but touch the helm of his garment, I shall be made whole. And the Bible says, she kept saying to herself. She kept saying, we don't know how long she said it to herself, but she kept saying it. She kept saying it. You wake up in the morning, you're like, I'm the healed of the Lord. You don't say, I'm sick looking for healing. No. I'm the healed of the Lord. 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 You know you say I'm the righteousness of God. Even when you, you even when you fall in sin, you don't forget that you're the righteousness of God. Who says that when you feel a pain you stop being the healed of God? Who says that when a sickness comes you stop being healed? You're healed because God has said it. When he says let there be, it becomes. No, he said by his stripes you are healed. He didn't say you're going to be healed. So you're healed. You say it. You take action. Say, take your bed. Walk. The man carried his bed and walked. He walked out of that place. Praise the Lord. So many times we hear very good things, but we don't take action. You hear good things, but you don't take action. Prophecy comes to you, but you don't take action. Some oh, pastor, I saw a dream. God was, I, I, I saw like God is blessing me with a car. Oh, what? Go to driving school. Walk. Take action. Yes. Yeah. You have no license, but you're always dreaming about cars. Yes. Get a passport. Do something. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 4 13 says, We believe so we speak. Having received the same spirit of faith, we believe so we speak. Yeah. Speaking has to proceed from your believing. Hallelujah. Yeah. We lay hands on the sick. When hands are laid on you, do you walk away? Do you walk? Do you, do you, do you, because see, when you come, you believe that hands should be laid on you. That means you believe that uh, you, you're taking your bed. You get what I mean? And walk would mean that the moment, if I come and hands are laid on me, the moment I walk from this place, I believe that I'm recovered. Because the hands shall be laid on you and you shall recover. So you walk out of this place believing that you're recovered. Walk out of this place believing that you are recovered. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Talk, 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 talk. Let everyone know around you that you are a man of faith. You are a woman of faith. Talk, talk contrary to what they praise. Talk contrary to what they say. Don't agree with them. And you see, it is very good to talk when there is nothing manifested yet. That's the best time to talk. Because see, once it happens, they also glorify God. They glorify God. They glorify God. I've seen many testimonies where people I was with in high school, people I was with in college, they testify of B. Praise the Lord. They see God. But it is because these are things that were spoken during that time. They were spoken much earlier. Hallelujah. Things we spoke about life, about provision, about marriage, about many things. And during that time, people thought, ah, he's just speaking. And sometimes it felt like it had taken so long. 
But when it happened, you hear phone calls from those people. Oh, you said, when we were here and we spoke and we said, no one in this church shall die to COVID. There are people who, Christians, who told me I'm not being wise. I'm risking the body of Christ. I'm risking our people. They wrote to me. After COVID and no one had died in this church, many of them kept quiet. Some of them became monitoring spirits on Facebook. Some of them... Some of them say, we like your faith. We like your faith. What are they doing? They are glorifying God. They are glorifying God. He silences them. So speak. Speak as your boss thinks that they are the reason you are there. Let them know that you look up to the hills. And where does your help come from? It comes. Yes. Let them know that. And when they will see you ascending into the horizons that God has prepared for you, they will glorify him. They will say, surely this is God. It is a good thing to have faith in God. It's a good thing to believe in God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's get up on our feet. Arise, take thy bed and walk. Arise, take thy bed and walk. I want to give us three minutes, yes? I want us to pray in faith. I don't want us to pray as victims. Hallelujah. You know some situations that you want to change around you. Of course, this I was measuring on healing. But you know any situation. But I want you now to speak not as a victim. I don't want to ask God why me. I want you now to speak like you are already a victor. You are an overcomer. I want you to thank him that that court case is being dealt with. Everything is working in your favor. And to thank him that, that your land is being restored. It is not being grabbed. And to thank him that your dad is healed. That you carry healing power. That this is bread for the children. Healing is bread for the children to you. I want you to, I want to speak as somebody who already knows what God has done in your life. Yes, I want, I want to hear some people who have serious things to change. Yes. Yes. Look at the blessing that you have. Believe what God has for you. There is a lot of hope. You're not disadvantaged. Your business will work. Your marriage will work. Your health is intact. By his stripes you are already healed. Your ministry will flourish. Yes. You will see fruit of the gift that is put upon your life. Father, thank you for everyone that came today. Thank you. We are all believers here. My desire and my prayer is that all of us will take a grasp, will get a grasp on what you have for us. That it will never be looked at as too good for us. That we know it is at our disposal. We are not going to be victims anymore. Thank you for your love, Father, I pray. Let your love be so real to everyone here. Make your love so real. If there is something that people will walk out of here with, let it be that you love us so much. And you've prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. You've prepared a table for us. Thank you, Father. I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrate the Lord with my time.